beginning to look a lot like Christmas here in Walnut Creek, California. We're in one of the Bay Areas here in Northern California in a grow zone 9B, which means the nighttime low temperatures and the plants that you have here in your food forest need to be able to withstand. Again, we're talking about winter nighttime low temperatures that can withstand temperatures as cold as 30 to five degrees, even if that doesn't happen. But I know here in Walnut Creek, the winters do dip into the freezing zone just slightly, a few degrees into the freezing zone, pretty much months on end during the winter months, nighttime lows. And I just wanna share with you the bountiful varieties of fruit trees you can be incorporating into your home garden and enjoying harvest pretty much every single month of the year in a cooler climate compared to the Los Angeles area where I live. And that's a grow zone, depending on what parts of LA, a 10A or 10B. Another important point when it comes to thriving in your grow zone is making sure that the plant is healthy. A healthier plant can withstand growing outside its grow zone by maybe another grow zone. For An example would be growing a zone 10 plant in a zone nine or a zone nine plant in a zone eight. And sometimes you can stretch the cold hardiness of a plant by making sure it's well taken care of. And one of the two points I'm gonna share with you in regards to making sure your plants are healthy for the zone that they're being grown in is making sure you've got them well fed. And over here, I've got a couple of the Ivory Organic Six Macros Plus fertilizers that pretty much give your plants all of the macronutrients that plants need. And that includes nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and that is what pretty much all the fertilizers focus on is your NPK, but the six macronutrients that plants need include magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. Magnesium is very important for the greenness of the plant, as is sulfur. Magnesium is the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, and calcium is in the cell wall of all the plants, and the soil needs in abundance, hence the word macros for macronutrients the six macronutrients for the soil this here is a super blend with a higher npk of 13 12 13 and then there's the lower premium blend fertilizer with a 244 npk so a lower npk and um and that's the premium blend and you can use a tablespoon to a gallon to make up to 20 gallons using this 11.8 ounce eight ounce bag and there's also the four pound bag where you can make over 120 gallons of liquid fertilizer and we're going to be discussing feeding your plants in another lesson but let's get started with the tour starting with this amazing and most beautiful pomegranate tree behind me i planted this food forest about 10 years ago and just check out the abundance of fruiting trees here on the property let's get started so this here is the wonderful pomegranate variety once it gets ripe, the fruit will begin to split like so. I'm gonna pick this here for you so you can see the inside of it. But this here is the wonderful pomegranate. What a beautiful, gorgeous fruit. Dark aerials as they call it. And um, we've been enjoying this pretty much every single day throughout Thanksgiving um, dinner, incorporating into our salads and even squeezing them and having the most delicious pomegranate fresh juices. One of the most amazing things with growing your own food is also the health benefits. The fact you're picking your fruits directly from the source, being the sun, compared to all the foods, even from your organic market that's been sitting there for days and weeks and possibly even months dying from the time it was harvested compared to the health benefits you get from growing your own food. So if you've got land or even potted containers, consider incorporating some of these plants around your garden. Let's continue. here we have three apples in a row that we planted take a look at this structure over here when we first planted it and this is a lesson we've done with Tom Spellman of the Dave Wilson nursery and I'm gonna talk about them more in just a second but one of the first things you should do when planting your tree is whitewashing it we're gonna talk about the value of whitewashing your tree trunk as you can see from about this point the first couple of branches down to the base of the tree we've whitewashed it about a year year and a half ago and you can still see that it's got some of that protection. I'm gonna talk more about that in a second, follow me. I wish I had the varieties of all of these trees, but a lot of labels have since worn off since they were planted. But this one over here still has its label on it and it's known as the Honeycrisp apple tree. And you can see how well it's doing. And something I wanna share with you while we're here 
is notice how low the branching is. And this is hugely ideal that the majority of the primary branches are within two to three feet of the base of the tree compared to if the tree trunk was six feet tall and branching at that point, most of the apples would be out of reach. So as you can see, when all of these spurs go to bloom in the upcoming spring, you can see that most of the apples such as these over here, are all gonna be within reach. And over here, you can see that we've got another variety of apple. Same thing, here I am standing six feet tall and about 80 to 90% of the canopy is within reach. So when it comes to pruning, which we're gonna discuss in my next lesson, we're going to bring most of these branches that have grown over last year, down to size so that when these spurs go to bloom, where those blooms are is where the fruit are gonna be. So even though it's gonna continue growing come spring and summer, all of those flowers, wherever they grow within reach, wherever they bloom, that's where the fruit in that harvest is going to be. Before I leave this property, this here is a mission olive tree. If you come a little closer, you may see that it's supporting some olives. Though tiny, this is still a growing and to be an established tree. But one other thing that will benefit the plant is a slight pruning job. By pruning it also, we're gonna help strengthen the structure. But this here is again, the Mission Olive variety. So I wish I had video of this pergola here behind me supporting the grapevine. I was here about six months ago and it was covered with a beautiful green canopy shade with hundreds of dangling grapes. And this is just such an amazing structure and a beautiful addition to the backyard orchard. So consider growing grapes as well. And pretty much any variety of grapes will thrive in this growing zone. As I'm looking at properties all around us, many of them have incorporated a vineyard looking concept within their backyard orchard to kind of mimic some of the vineyards that surround Walnut Creek. But you, can, you can see here based on age, you can see the um, size of the tree trunk. And again, this was planted, I'd say closer to about eight years ago. And since then, we've created some more grapes by way of cutting. Grapes can be easily propagated by way of cutting. And we've done many of those lessons over the last few years here on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel. So now here we are walking into the citrus orchard and notice how we've done the citrus concept towards the back of the property. Oranges, still a couple dozen still left up there. Check out the tree just behind that and another and then lemons. Eureka lemon. And then just behind that, Mexican lime in the far corner. You see those little teeny tiny yellow fruit? Mexican lime. Another orange tree, another lemon tree. And notice as I sit here up on the wall, the planning and the concept behind having the citrus orchard behind me and towards the perimeter of the entire property, between the property line of this home and the homes behind it is we put the citrus because they are evergreen plants. And being that they keep their leaves on them year round was the reason for privacy that we strategically put the citrus against the back wall. Whereas we put more of the deciduous trees such as the figs and the persimmons and the pomegranates that we already saw within the garden. So that's something to keep in mind when designing where would you strategically put your citrus compared to your deciduous fruiting trees? Let's continue. So behind me here is another citrus tree that's been whitewashed in a lesson that we've done years back. And as you can see, the tree trunk's still painted white. Just wanna share with you that as we're talking about grow zones, we talk about the importance of fertilizer 
And when it comes to fertilizing your plants, making sure that they have all of the elements and all the nutrition necessary for health, you can ensure that the plant will perform well from year to year. But another way of protecting your plants through weather extremes is a gardening concept known as whitewashing. And whitewashing is simply painting your trees. It's something that's been done for thousands of years, whether it's been using mud or limestone or more traditionally using paint and tar-based products. But using paint, you put paint on your house and 100 years later, there's still paint on your house. But you put paint on your tree trunk, as a tree continues to grow, as I'm going to share on a couple of trees, you're going to see that the paint is going to pretty much crumble off and land in your soil for about 100 years. But the preferred way to whitewash your plants, as it was done thousands of years ago, is to do things in an organic and all-natural way, in a way that does not harm your soil biology, the community, and eventually our planet. So what we've got here is the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection Against Damaging summer sunburn, but also winter sun scald, insects and rodents. And this is for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs, pretty much all plants. And as we said, for use in organic produ production and healthier than latex paint and tar-based products. And as you can see here, Omri listed for organic use. This here is color white, also available if you wanna go with a more natural looking color, this is color brown. And then they've got the blue label, which talks about protection from damaging summer sunburn and winter sun scald. But, but the difference between the blue label and this yellow label is the yellow label has the added benefit of these seven natural oils, which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And that offers protection from repelling insects and rodents. Whereas this product over here is more focused on summer protection and winter protection. So, and these are gardening, again, concepts known as whitewashing. Well, let's continue the tour. So behind me here is a group of three varieties of cherry trees. This here, as you can see from the leaves, you can see the cherry pattern and size. So these are three cherry trees, all differing varieties so that they can cross pollinate each other and result in maximum cherry yields from year to year. As these trees have been performing, these trees have endured some damage, as you can look down below, and you can see some of the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard there to protect all of that damaged bark, protecting it from the invasion of beetles and termites and other disease in all of those exposed wood areas. And there's more that we've got to do. As we saw with the apple tree earlier, and this is something that we also saw at the Dave Wilson Nursery when we visited their Irvine Experimental Gardens, that they all pretty much pruned their apple trees down to about 18 inches off the ground. And this is something that's done right at planting to ensure that you've got low growing branches. You gotta be careful to make sure that there's no suckers from below the graft as most fruit trees are grafted, meaning you've got a rootstock and on top of it, you got that flavor of fruit that is gonna ensure maximum quality, maximum flavor, maximum whatever that variety is that's been grafted onto it. For example, let's say the Bing Cherry being grafted onto a plum root stock. If you allow the root sucker to create a sucker and grow to fruiting, if it's on a plum root stock, you're gonna end up with plums and it might be an inferior plum, but it might have superior roots and hence that root stock is being used. Or that root is offering tolerance against the cold as here we are in a colder grow zone. So you've got your rootstock and then on top of it is the scion or the flavor, which is in this example, the Bing cherry that's grafted on top. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you prune it down to 18 inches or 24 inches, and it starts creating those side lateral branches, that none are coming off of that plum rootstock. And instead, all of those branches are coming from the scion wood. And here we are with that three cherry trees. And I just wanna share with you some of the landscape and the, tr and the, and the homes that are surrounding us. That's kind of why I've given you this view as well. Just next to the cherry trees, we've got here now the apricot. So here's an apricot tree. And now let's enter the tunnel. As we come through, again, we've got a Eureka lemon. And over here, some Meyer lemons. And then one of my favorites, here we are the first week of December. And check this out, the Fuyu persimmon. 
So we got to enjoy and we've been harvesting like crazy those pomegranates. And now over here, we've got pretty much an unlimited harvest of for your persimmons. Look at how pretty that is. So my family's just been enjoying eating a lot of these every single day. Let's continue. So over here used to be a series of about three to four fig trees, right where you're standing was one as well. And just about six months ago, we introduced a Kadota, which is a green variety of fig. And the reason I put the green fig is because I noticed this one over here was a black mission fig. So just so the family gets to enjoy different colors and different um, flavors of figs here on the property. But what was one supporting three other giant monster fig trees and now we're down to one monster fig tree. And then this new addition is an issue with gophers from under the ground that were basically inhabiting this corner of the property. As you can see, if you take a look around the corner, that it's all open space from here to pretty much forever. And the gophers are pretty much invading. And no matter what treatments are being used within the property, there's always gophers coming in. And but something I've learned from visiting many other gardens, including the Dave Wilson Nursery in Hickman, California, and their experimental orchard just this past year, is that their figs also within their experimental orchard were also suffering the same issue in regards to just trying to survive where gophers and maybe even moles and voles have inhabited, being that they're attracted to the roots. So my tip to you, and the mistake that I made by planting another fig this close to this established fig tree is to scatter them within the garden. Don't put them all in the same place. And another helpful tip when it comes to figs is to keep them away from where most people would be walking through the garden as figs are also somewhat allergenic to the leaves may cause rashes to um, people with some skin types and the saps are very caustic, that white sap has been used traditionally to cure warts. So um, it's been a good practice for many generations in my family to keep your figs on the outskirts of your property and not in the heart of your property for that exact reason. So consider that when strategically deciding on where to put your figs. But my lesson to you here is to not put a cluster of figs all in one area as if the moles, the voles, and the gophers come to invade, that they don't take all of your fig trees, but instead hopefully you can treat it as maybe a couple of them suffer while other ones are safe in another part of your garden, away from those underground rodents. Let's continue. So over here to my left is the Asian pear, which is a pretty much a cross in flavor between an apple and a pear. One of my most favorite enjoyable fruit trees here on the property. Plums. Over here, we've got the fourth apple tree and a fifth. And you can see some fruit still dangling on there for the birds to enjoy. And then an almond tree. And again, structurally, love this pattern. Take a look at the base, about two feet off the bottom, all the primary branches, harvesting fruit, couldn't be made easier. Compared to, let me show you in contrast, if we come down here. So here we are now next to a nectarine tree. And as you can see, the tree is about four feet off the ground. And then the branches begin and my reach is about eight feet. So most of the fruit are gonna be within seven to eight feet starting and then going up, which makes it not practical to truly harvest these fruit from the ground level. And to set up a ladder here on a hillside slope is very dangerous. And this is why it's important to train your trees from a young age by basically pruning it down low and allowing it to branch. This here is another example. When we came here about a year ago, you can see that it was whitewashed with the Ivory Organics 3 one plant guard. Again, with the goal of keeping beetles and termites and disease from entering this invading wood until the tree finally calluses over. As you can see, the wound is slowly at a rate of maybe a half an inch, a quarter of an inch per year, 
eventually going to close its way and close this wound. But if beetles and termites get into the heartwood, which is the supporting structure of the tree, then it's going to weaken the tree and the integrity of the tree and shorten the overall life of the plant, and hence the importance of whitewashing and protecting your tree. Another important lesson I want to share with you while we're still here is not to be doing this with tar or latex paint, because as you can imagine, if we put tar or latex paint, which traps moisture, then the underlying wood being, this is not a table, this is living wood, and there's going to be moisture behind it that's going to result in rotting of that wood, and that's even going to soften the wood further than not doing anything. So Ivory Organics is a porous product, dries on, porous, allowing moisture to pass, but keeping beetles and termites and disease out. And that's the benefit of using the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard or even the whitewash formula instead of the traditional last 100 years use of tar-based products and latex-based products for protecting pruned branches and limbs as we would in this example. Well, let's continue. So now we're entering the rose section. This is now closest to the view from the inside of the house looking up at the hillside and the um, entry to the garden is this beautiful rose bed with a row of tree roses, as they're called. As you can see, the tree trunks are at least two to three up off the ground before the branching begins, giving it again that tree shape look. As these tower in color come spring, summer, and even early fall, beautiful colors over these now shorter, more compact bush type roses that are now here in the front. Here's, I guess, what's left <laughs> of the roses. I'd say there's close to about 30 to 40 varieties of roses in here. So we said for the fig trees, ideally, if you're gonna be growing more than one variety is to stagger them within the garden. So in case there's any underground pests that are damaging the overall health of the plant, it won't affect all of your figs within your orchard as Again, if they're in a group, they're pretty much all gonna get attacked at the same time. However, when it comes to apples and other fruit trees, including your citrus, there is something to be gained from cross-pollinization between different varieties. I'm not talking about the same varieties, not having a honey crisp and three honey crisps around it, but by having a honey crisp with a Granny Smith and having a third variety of apple, they're going to cross-pollinate each other and result in better yields, better quality, and better flavor fruits than they otherwise would be, even if they are self-fruitful, meaning you don't need a second variety of apple in order to create fruit. And these are important concepts also when planting the garden is to create groups of related trees within the orchard as well to maximize harvest quality and yields. And now let me share with you this last planting bed over here. Now we're walking into the screen vegetable and herb garden here on the property. Follow me. So this is the remnants of it. Here we are the first week of December. You can see that there's some raspberries and blackberries that have scattered throughout the property. I know there was some more up in, in this area. There was also a lot of strawberries that were thriving in this zone here in front of us. And as we continue forward, you can see this is what's left of, they've also have some peppers and another variety of peppers over here. And we've got some tomatoes, as you can see here. Still green, still flowering. Let's take a look at this cluster. But my advice would be, even if this were to somehow survive winter, I'd recommend starting all over. And the majority of the time, you're gonna have faster and greater success with a healthier plant starting fresh come spring next year than trying to revive this plant and all that it has to endure going through winter. And here we go, continuing through with more and more tomato plants, different varieties. I can see down there, we've got some cherry variety um, tomatoes that are red and ready for picking. And over here, we've got some inferior fruit. What's left of the season. In between, we've got some rosemary, lemongrass. And we can see over here, 
if you've even left a tag, is one of the last zucchini squash. And as you work your way up, I can see over here there's another sign of what was left. And I can see like the skeletons of what was once here. And you can see they had the Japanese cucumbers as well, which sometimes can reach lengths of two to three feet. Oh, and here in between, I can see over here, we've got mint. And just behind it, spearmint. And I'm sure we've got, it says over here, tarragon. It's a nice variety of herbs way late in the season. Wow, that's fantastic. This here is an oregano plant. Check out how massive that is. The scent is unbelievably delicious. The same flavor you'd get like in a good pasta or a pizza sauce. As again, this is gonna be their vegetable and herb garden, safe from any pests and predators. So when I first started this project about 10 years ago, these canary palm trees were only measuring about five to 10 feet off the ground. And look at how magnificently beautiful these trees are that surround the entire perimeter of the property. And then on the property, what we've done is we planted a series of about a dozen olive trees, alternating between varieties all the way around. So this is about a dozen olive trees. And if you wanna come in a little closer, you can see that they're fruiting well right now. And every other tree, you can kind of see the pattern between its growth patterns being that they're different varieties have been staggered in between to again, further cross pollination between the varieties, which result in maximum yields, quality, and flavor. Just check that out. I'm hoping you can capture all of that fruit that's up there. Just check out all of that fruit right over my head. And this variety over here has even larger pieces. Here we go. Check that out. And year after year, you can expect the quality and the flavor and the size of the fruit to continue to improve as the plant becomes established with your good love and care. So check out the produce that we harvested today, fresh from the backyard, better than the Whole Foods organic foods. I've got the bag here, but better than Whole Foods is picking it fresh from the backyard. And check out what we've got here. We've got pomegranates and persimmons and oranges and lemons. And then I've got this bag here too. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of a backyard orchard here in Walnut Creek, California. And if so, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the push bell notification to get noticed as soon as one of these informative and educational videos brought to you by Ivory Organics gets released. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.